Hi, it's a beautiful day in Cota de Casa. I'm on the north course by the 12th tee box. But you don't have to go very far throughout Cota to find this plant. This is an artichoke thistle, Cynara cardunculus. It's also most commonly known as a cardoon. It is the ancient precursor of the globe artichoke that we find in our grocery store. And you see these are all over the place. In some parts of the world, it's a delicacy. In Southern California, it's a menace. And you see them out there on the slope a little bit. All up here with those purple heads. And also way up here. The artichoke thistle, it's a member of the aster family. Aster means star in Greek, like an asteroid. So the portion of the plant consists of the flower buds before the flowers come into bloom. And here we have both the flower buds and the bloom. So the flower here is in clusters of flowers. And they do that to make themselves appear larger in order to attract pollinators like this um, bee here. And there's a bee in this guy here as well. Now, you don't eat the globe of this plant like you would at the grocery store, but you do eat the stems at the base, or perhaps just the base itself, where you can peel off all the thistles, carve off the outside, and you can eat it raw, or you can fry it. Either way, it's not really a delicacy for me, but it's a, quite a delicacy in many parts of the world. And here we have a little pollinating bee. So where did this artichoke thistle come from? Well, it originated in the Mediterranean, probably Sicily or Tunisia, where it's been domesticated for thousands of years and still occurs as a wild plant. It was first described by the Greeks in the fourth century BC as a cactus and became popular as a Greek, Roman, and Persian cuisine. In 77 AD, the Roman naturalist Pliny, he called the plant one of the Earth's monstrosities. But many continued to eat them and cultivate them for food. It was then carried to Spain when the Moors invaded and occupied Iberia during the conquista of the early 700s. Now the word artichoke comes from the Arab occupied Spain, where in Arabic it's called a al kusafa which evolved into the Spanish word al carchafa and then the English word artichoke. Now during her reign, Catherine de Medici, she made this a delicacy in France. It's uh, said that she ate this plant every day. Now she began slaughtering all the non-Catholics, of course, particularly at the uh, St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre of 1572. And the Protestants and the Huguenots fled France and took this plant to the rest of Europe. It then spread to Argentina, where it's extremely invasive today, and also out to Australia and California, where we consider it a horrible weed. So as a food source, this was once very popular in America, but it fell out of favor in the 1800s. It's still cultivated in France, Spain, and Italy. In Geneva, it's considered a culinary specialty. It's very common in North Africa, and it's used to make couscous. Couscous, right? Anyway, cardoon leaf stalks look like giant celery sticks. It can be served steamed or braised, have an artichokey flavor, it, just like the artichokes you can buy at the store. Now, before the cardoons are sent to the table, the stalks or the ribs are blanched by tying them together and wrapping them round with straw, which is also tied up with a cord and left for about three weeks. You want to keep them out of the sun, maybe by burning them in the ground. Then after three weeks, braise the stems in cooking oils and serve up to your guests. Now at Christmas time in Italy, guests traditionally start their meal with a soup of cardoon cooked in chicken broth with a little bit of lamb meatball. And in Spain, it's still considered quite a delicacy. Now some of the flower parts can also be used in cheeses for the use of cardoon enzymes. 
Now in America, you can't really find this except in local farmers markets. The main roots can be boiled or, or served cold and the stems are traditionally served battered if you go to New Orleans. Now even though this is quite a horrible plant and I don't like it, many people do like it and they grow it as an ornamental plant for its very bright foliage and large flowers. Now because of its oils, it's also used in the production of biodiesel fuel and in the production of bioplastics. So that is the story of our artichoke thistle. I hope you enjoyed that. And it's very sticky, so, you know, don't get stuck by it. All right, bye.